So this video is a little bit tougher to do, um, and you'll understand why. I think, and it hurts me uh, to some extent to do this video because I think there's so much gray area in all here that, that it feels wrong to kind of talk about it. So this is going to be kind of a different way of, of going through it. I'm going to try and be kind of factual and also lay out some questions. But I think this is one of those that anyone who tells you what the answer is, is um, I, I, I don't know. It, it's a tricky one. So let's talk about Scott Lobdell. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I, you know, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm very exhausted at these. Uh, but I'm at these. You know, what did these people do? But I, I'm trying to, you know, I put out some data because right now a lot of it's being driven by tweets, and the very very vague tweets. I mean, the uh, the tweets that went on by uh, Mags uh, around. Uh, her situation were, were the vaguest of all. I'm like, guy was nice to me, and it, it made me feel weird. Please don't give me internet hugs. It's like, I, I mean, yikes! You know that that's not healthy for the industry. Um, and and you know, an interesting problem in all this. Before I get to the guy in particular, is that we're not able to talk about it. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of shutdown. Like you need to just listen. And it's okay, but at some point we do need to talk about it for solutions because the solutions that are being offered are just not, they're not viable. You know, there's a lot of kind of good, you know, like, like the, the pledge that went out on Twitter of like, we're all just going to promise to be better. Well, you know, that, that lasted all of like less than 24 hours before one of the people who posted the pledge deleted the tweet because they were getting their own kind of me too moment going on. You can, we can't just say, Hey, let's be better. And, and I think we have to have this conversation, but if you have the conversation and you don't say it in exactly the right way, uh, well, no matter what you do, you're going to piss off one group or the other. So we, it, it, this isn't, it's not good enough to just say, you know, hey, nobody talk about this. Oh, and by the way, uh, silence is violence. So you, you can't not talk about it either. It just, it leaves us with nothing. And this is a goofy, goofy situation that demands uh, some, some thoughts, some, some changes and, and some solutions. But the only way to get solutions, we're going to have to talk about, and we're going to have to recognize this. People talk and work through it, like I'm doing here in this video. I'm not going to do it perfectly. I'm kind of stream of consciousness, putting some ideas out. My hope is that somebody, you know, more intelligent than me, is listening to this and goes, "Ah, I've got some ideas," and they can put some stuff out. And then maybe somebody more intelligent than them can say, "But we forgot about this, and we can get ourselves to a solution." But just shutting down all conversation isn't helping. So what did Scott uh, Lobdell do? Well, uh, you know, we've had this flurry of uh, harassment against Cameron Stewart, Warren Ellis, Charles Brownstein, uh, many, many, many others. It's it's all out of the woodwork. Some, as I did the earlier video, some pretty serious and some very, very open-ended or, or just, I don't like this guy. He promised that he'd do a comic book with me. He didn't. Therefore, he is a rapist kind of stuff. I mean, literally just over the top stuff. Um, but Lobdell, so first off, why this came to light, two reasons. One, you know, good old Bleeding Cool, who uh, doesn't write articles uh, without uh, doing it the proper way, as they promoted it. They wrote an article without any of those things, but that's fine. Um, Scott Lobdell announced that he is leaving Red Hood and the Outlaws with issue number 50. Uh, this has been a comic he's written for basically nine years, and he wrote, I'm stepping away from my only remaining freelance work on Red Hood and the Outlaws, effective immediately. Issue number 50 out in October will be my final issue. While I'm profoundly grateful for the last 10 years on a book telling the story of a tragically flawed man in search of redemption, I depart certain that my vacancy will be filled by a dynamic new voice um, and you know some a, a number of different tags. He, it, it, he, he's a smart writer in, in a lot of ways, whether you like his work or not. And so the, the wording of his, uh, his post to Instagram is, uh, he worded it specifically. I mean, you, you, can, you can make that argument. And his name's being mentioned a lot. Um, in particular, I think Tess Fowler, uh, Alex DeCampi is, um, is saying a lot about him right now. So there's, there's just a lot of uh, wording uh, going out. And what, what's unclear, and this is what we're about to get into, is if this is new, if this is old, because a lot of these uh, allegations are, you know, something happened once, 
And then a lot of people heard the story and then they kind of made that story their story. And so it's been passed around. Uh, I mean, I've noticed, I'm not saying it in this case, we don't know, but uh, in the past you know, year or so, there's been a lot of stories that have come across my desk where people say, you know, hey, this, this, and this happened. And I've said, to you? It's like, well, not to me, to a friend. Then when you back out of it, it's like, well, we're, we're just telling the same story over and over again, just by different people. Uh, that's that's happening a lot right now. So it's hard to really get a sense of what exactly is going on. So to, to kind of get to the bottom of all this, um, some time ago, there was some comments about a, uh, you know, a, a kind of creepy situation. The, the, the unfortunate way, by the way, is that you can't um, just explain this story um, without it, it, without putting some judgment out. So I'm going to try very hard not to do that. But basically, um, at a Comic-Con, <laughs> go figure, uh, there was some pickup behavior that seemed a bit uh, insistent. Uh, you know, in this particular case, the story was mentioned. It didn't name names, but then Scott Lobdell kind of came up and identified himself um, and apologized, uh, kind of outed himself and then apologized back in 2013. And he said, uh, you know, he, he offended somebody. He uh, didn't mean to make them feel victimized and, and um, you know, kind of uh, everything else. This was um, what, what occurred was what a lot of people back in kind of the 80s or the 90s would call, you know, aggressive uh, pickup. Uh, somebody hustling. Uh, so Scott Lobdell, and, and there's all these tweets and screenshots and everything else. Uh, but, but basically, this woman is at a uh, at a convention. Uh, Scott Lobdell comes up and is hitting on her to some extent, um, kind of trying to like, hey, look at me. And then and Scott Lobdell has a reputation for people that but kind of like almost doing uh, you know corny jokes or, or dad jokes. I, that's not exactly right, but just kind of cheesy lines. Um, there's, there, I've, heard, I've heard that uh, from people in the past. So anyway, so he, he says, Hey, I, um, you know, tries to pick up this woman. She's married. He kind of backs away, but then he's like, Oh, I like a challenge. And it's, it's again, if you watch, if you watch a movie in the eighties, like these, like those ski comedies, uh, those, those bad kind of sex comedy type movies, you, you get this kind of the, the pickup guy, the, the guy hustling for, for a date. Um, and, and there's kind of these, this kind of aggressive um, uh, hustling going on. Again, I'm trying to, to, to be able to do careful because I think I could tell the same story, by the way, the exact same story, making the guy look super creepy and making it look innocent just based on the words I use. So I'm trying, I just want to point that out to all of you. I'm trying to pick this middle of the road way. I mean, I'm, I'm failing miserably, I'm sure. But anyway, so Scott Lobdell uh, picks up, you know, is hitting on this woman and uh, she kind of says, you know, wasn't interested. Now she later posts uh, screenshots and other things uh, showing that she's kind of joking back at him, which, you know, if you're uncomfortable, and this is one of the things I want to say from the outset, if you're a woman at a convention, you're making your way into industry, you're approached by somebody who is known, who has a bigger standing in the industry, um, you do tend to play along. Because it is a small community, as we found. The, the interesting part, to, by the way, some of this, is that the comic industry is so small that you get this, this kind of stuff can happen because it is so small. And, and, and people, because it's so small, people are afraid of ever offending anyone or ever kind of, uh, you know, burning a bridge. So they will go along with things. And what's weird about this is you'll see some of the same people who are saying this isn't okay, this isn't right, advocating for the industry to stay that way, for the industry to remain kind of, hey, you know, it's a tight-lit community. You have to constantly look out for each other. We have to keep our small networks and all small groups. You know, I see uh, Tess Fowler making comments like that or, and, and just, you know, Alex DeCampi making these comments about, hey, you know, it's uh, we got to look out for each other. we got to watch each other. Okay, it sounds good, but one of the consequences of that is it also sets up this dynamic that if you know you're being watched, if it is a small community, it tends to, you tend to play along with things that may make you uncomfortable. And part of the whole background to all this with Lobdell and others is that people got uncomfortable, but didn't feel comfortable enough. <laughs> Sorry, they got uncomfortable and they didn't feel comfortable to say no or walk away or just shut it down. They felt like they had to play along because this woman that, uh, you know, back this again, many years ago, 2013, um, as, uh, you know, Lobdell saying, Hey, do you know why, do you know when a Cub Scout becomes a Boy Scout? And the woman says, I'll ask my brother. 
And Liddell says, when he eats his first brownie, ah, ha, ha, ha. yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. And then um, she replies back, laced with PCP. That's kind of a, you know, they're trying to have banter. She's clearly, un she's uncomfortable, but she's also bantering back. If you're at a con, and you're trying to pick some woman up and she's kind of bantering back to you. You don't, re you're not picking up on the fact that she's uncomfortable. Now, maybe you should, but you might say, why in this industry, why is it so small that we have to have, you know, why should women or men or whoever it is have to kind of dance around rather than just say, hey, you know, F off. You know, why, why is it that she has to, to joke back at him? You know, I think, and, and is that Scott's fault that she has to joke back with him? I, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's the bigger picture of all this. Because I, I think, anyway, so anyway, they go back and they, they, they uh, hit on and hit on. And, and you can see from her answer, she gets more, less and less playful, I would say, um, back at it. And he's kind of, you know, continuing to dangle a little bit like, hey, I, you know, I can help you out and everything else. But he's hitting on her. Now, here's one key difference, I think, to some of the other stories we've heard from Warren Ellis and others. And the conclusion of the whole story is Lobdell uh, did do introductions, did uh, tell her where to go, who to talk to, did help her out, regardless of the fact that his attempts to kind of uh, come on to her um, were unsuccessful. And so then if we look at other things throughout Lobdell's career, we hear, you know, there's a number of other stories. People like to say that. But you also hear with all this that Lobdell consistently did push to get, you know, women, get other people in, you know, into comics, help bring them in. And, you know, like we can make an assumption he didn't sleep with all those people. So, you know, he did he did at least seem to have some separation. As a me guessing, by the way, just for what I can read and what I can see, he did seem to have a separation between, hey, I'm, I'm going to help you get into the industry and, hey, I'd like to sleep with you. Those They, they did seem to, he was, he was going for one, maybe, um, but he also seemed to do the other without, you know, it wasn't all tied. Now, that is unfortunately not something that can be said for others. This is awkward to talk about. But here's the, the kind of an interesting capper to all this. So Alex DeCampi says, uh, hey, you know, Scott sincerely believes there should be more women writers and artists at DC and has, behind the scenes, quietly been reaching out to women creators to introduce them to senior DC staff. So this guy you're all pasting, he's actually doing more than anyone else at this moment to increase the number of women making mainstream comics. Okay, awesome, right? So here's somebody who's saying, hey, you guys are sliming somebody who's really trying to help women out in comics. That's awesome. Good, good for her, you know, and she's standing up for old Scott. So then, um, unfortunately, uh, about seven years later, Alex DeCampi writes, look, Scott Lobdell is so well known for being a harasser that at DC dinners, retreats, the senior DC female staff all make sure he's not sat next to any new young editorial assistants to keep them safe. So I guess he keeps getting hired because of the quality of his writing. Oh, wait. And then she posts some photos of like crap that... He's done. Um, <laughs> same person uh, as Alex DeCampi making comments in both places. I, I say all this, so so again, it's all in the news again because this is all coming up again, and, and here we are. Um, you know, there's there's you you will hear some really you know Blake Norcott has talked about Scott Lodell being you know consummate professional, warm, inviting, generous, uh, quirky sense of humor. Uh, but has maintained, you know, steadfastly, we need more female voices in comics and et cetera. I think this gets to a, you know, what do, what do you do with all this? Um, on one hand, we, we do know one thing for a fact. We know that Scott uh, Lobdell did push to get plenty of LGBTQ uh, people into comics. He made lots of introductions. He advocated for them. There's, this is on record. He, he pushed very hard to get a lot of these people in. We, we know this. Um, we also know, uh, or at least we, we've heard that he has a very weird sense of humor, kind of quirky kind of jokes and everything else, an unusual guy. And, um, we, at least, you know, he's got a reputation of being a player at these uh, conventions. And so those three can all be dealt with separately. Those, all three of those things can be true. And what is, um, hard to, it, what's hard to assess from all this is, who, you know, did one lead to the other? Did it was the was the the player part, was the hitting on people part uncomfortable enough to the point that it, it caused a really bad situation for somebody? 
Uh, for what it's worth, you know, Scott Lobdell uh, apparently is in some uh, gender sensitivity workshops. He's trying to kind of better himself. Um, he he's reached out for advice uh, reportedly uh, on how to do this, um, and that uh, you know maybe both things can be true that he's he's out uh, looking for his own business at comic conventions, and that uh, you know here we go. And I think maybe this is the big question uh, to be to be answered. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I'll say it one, but I'll leave it with this: um, there are you know Andrea Shea current DC editor. Thanks Scott for getting her foot on the, you know, to, to giving her an opportunity, um, directly said, uh, you know, that, that Scott helped open doors, helped get her in, um, knowing Andrea Shea, that I have absolutely zero. I mean, I, I would stake my life on it that, uh, you know, she didn't, uh, Scott didn't sleep with her. It wasn't the sexual favor that these were separate. It was professional. I, I absolutely believe it. Um, so, where does this come down and where, where do we get to a solution? Um, I think, and now here's my own personal comment on it. We have to start really understanding, kind of like I've said before, what are the problems and what are the, um, you know, what, what are the things that are true? We have to take care of it right now. It's almost like a triage needs to take place. Something's on fire. Somebody has been shot. Um, this is uncomfortable. We need to fix it at some point. We need to start to bucket these things off because talking about all of them together is doing nobody any good. It's going to tune people out. It's going to give bad people a lot of cover and it's going to run good people out of the industry. Now I'm not saying I don't know enough about Scott Lobdell. Maybe behind the scenes, he is a very bad guy and everything else. He's being treated right now. Like he's a serial harasser and like this comment from Alex DeCamp, he had to be seated differently from other people. I can tell you, I've heard the exact opposite by the way, just from people. I, I've heard that, that that comment is a bald-faced lie, but but who knows? You know, Maybe somebody took upon themselves to do that. Maybe that was a policy. I don't know. What I do know is that we have to start, uh, we just have to start designating, you know, what's somebody that is, uh, you know, abusing their power, uh, clearly doing something wrong. Uh, there's lots of evidence of it. Uh, why are they still getting jobs in comics versus what do we do with somebody who, you know, is, should we be telling people that when you go to a comic convention, you're not allowed to, you know, date, pick up, talk to anyone? I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that as a goofy thing. I mean, is, is that what we need to do? I, some, some industries do that. There are some tech companies that go to tech conferences and say, you know, you're not allowed to do any personal socializing. You're there for business. You go in, you do your show, you do your talk, you can have a nice dinner, you go to your hotel, you're done nothing else. And is that where comics head? I think it's going to be impossible. The, the way comics treats itself like this small, you know, community, it's, it, that's not going to happen. This problem is just going to keep bouncing around. I, I don't know. So what did Scott Lobdell do? Well, I, I, I explained to you maybe in more detail than you wanted. Uh, it sounds like he, he advocated hard to get people into the industry. It sounds like he uh, told some creepy jokes and sounds like he hit on people uh, well past where he should have. Uh, when it was clear that it wasn't going anywhere, he, he should have uh, called it a day and gone after somebody else. I, I don't know. That's what it looks like. Should he be run out of comics? That's a question you you get to answer. It's a personal choice. Uh, my answer is is no, based on what I can see. Um, no, I don't think this is grounds to run somebody out of comics. I think that many of the people who are arguing and shouting about all this have done worse. Um, and in many cases, I think they're shouting about to cover up their own things that they've done worse. But, you know, it's your choice. It's your dollar. It's your comic to buy. Um, hopefully this is getting to the end of it. I, I went through a lot more detail on this just to try and lay out. This is why this conversation is tricky. And some of you in the comments want to say, you know, maybe she should, you know, just shut up or, you know, what guys can't pick up women anymore. I, whatever, you know, you can, your, your opinion is your opinion. But this is a tough situation because there's a lot of lines here. Is it just, you know, he did his signings and then he went out looking for chicks? Okay. Is it that, you know, when he is going to these editorial summits, he has to be seated uniquely uh, away from other people? Well, that's more serious then. Um, does he make people feel like there's this lech kind of leaning over him? That, that's not good. Or, you know, is he just trying to, you know, get a date for the night? Uh, you know, there needs to be a better mechanism, certainly, than, uh, than jury by Twitter.
All right, I'm out. I'm out with this. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking about problems in the industry, how we fix them. But unless there's some real tangible, significant story or a crime, I'm done with the, the names and the, the people. I, I think I, I've been using this trying to illustrate why we have problems and why it's so tough to talk about. But I don't think this is going to end. And I do not want to do a video about this every two days. It's, it's not no good. I think the industry definitely needs to change. You'll hear more comments, more conversation about this topic, but I'm going to be talking about here's some solutions we want to try. Here's some systemic things within comics that are broken. Not the people, but the policies that are causing this to happen. That's what you're going to hear out of me in the future. And I hope you'll join me with coming up with solutions. We have to figure out how to talk about it. Uh, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, or Facebook at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.